going on everybody it's me again coming to you live out a hog hauler well we ain't really live but you know, we ain't really a hog hauler but it is me so it's been a few days thought i'd try to do some catching up with y'all uh go ahead and tell you a story uh that was told to me when i was a kid i couldn't pick between which one to tell so it was a I've been promising y'all the story about the fetch. <clears throat> I know a lot of y'all don't know what a fetch is. Uh, a fetch can be considered a, something like a witch or a, a doppelganger. Um, they can look like any. They can look like you. They can look like anything or anybody. And uh, used to the old people would say, you know, don't go in the woods. So and so spotted a fetch up there the other day, or there's a fetch in the woods, or they think a fetch got that little girl. You know, that was just a a, a saying. But some people had claimed to see see the fetch, kind of like a shapeshifter. Maybe can can change what they look like. Nobody really knows for sure. But uh, like I was telling y'all, my uncle Cedric. He uh, he was a big hunter, fox hunter, coon hunter. He done it all. So uh, the rest of his brothers did too. But uh, he would come home and he'd go hunting about every evening when he could. When it's the season, he'd go coon hunting. And his wife, named Stella Fay, and she would watch some kids in the community. And these kids sometimes. The older boys would actually, if their parents was going to be late, working late in the sawmill or for whatever reason, he would take the boys with him. So he uh, he left one evening to go hunting. I guess it was probably around, I'd say, 4, 30, 5 o'clock. And there was a couple of kids left over in the community that, that stayed there. She would keep them as late as they needed to. Mostly for our, for her kinfolk, our kinfolk, or any neighbors that lived in the area, she would do that for. So, uh, he goes off and loads a truck. Besides, he's going to just go over the hill right there, still be on some of their property, but just be up on top of the hill hunting. So, he goes off. He disappears for a while and goes hunting. And it just gets about dark. You know, just right around dark time. And the kids are still out in the yard. Uh, they're probably catching lightning bugs, if I'm guessing. is what kids done back then. And one little boy looks up and sees Cedric step out of the woods. And uh, he tells the other two boys that's there with him, Look, there's, there's Cedric. And he motioned. For him to come over there to him so the little boy said let's go he's gonna take us hunting with him well the other little boy stopped and told him said no something just ain't right here it's not that's he, he drove up there number one number two here he is walking out of the woods just motioning for us he'd always had this whistle that he would do this he'd whistle and you hear it all over the holler he just or i can't do it but and you'd hear it. And he used to do that to the kids all the time. Well, they claimed that he just stood there and motioned again. And the other little boy who wanted to go, more or less, like, look, I'm going. He's, he's wanting me to come hunting with him. <clears throat> so he takes off. And in the meantime, the other little boy, he, he goes after that, that young boy. He almost gets to him. He runs him down, catches him. Well, they had got close enough to him to realize that this wasn't Cedric. This, some things wasn't quite right. Uh, the way he looked, his mannerisms, right down to the clothes that he wore, did not look right. And they said they felt like a, like a coldness, like a cold air, cold wind, and coldness in this thing's eyes. And the main thing that stood out to my Aunt Stella Fay was they said the eyes were black. And they just felt like this wasn't him. 
or at least at least a couple of the boys did so he just steps back into the woods now he didn't take a gun i think i don't know if it was training season so you don't take a gun uh, coon hunting with you during training season unless it's a pistol or something better. but he didn't he didn't have his gun so they uh the kids they all go back in they feel something went right and they told Stella Faye about it. And she told him, no, something's not right. He would not walk back down. I mean, if he's going to take you kids, he would have took you kids when he left. He would offer to take one of y'all. He's not talked to your parents. He don't know what time they're coming to pick you up. Uh, if that was him, something's wrong. Something's happened. Something's wrong. Because like I say, they, they really believed in signs back then too. And she said something's wrong. So uh, a couple of kids left. His parents showed up. It was one or two kids stayed behind, still waiting on their parents. Well, Cedric come in from hunting. I guess about I don't know. It was dark. It was after dark. He still had to get up and go to work the next day, so he wasn't that late. And a couple of the little boys asked him. What did you want earlier when you were uh, when you were motioning for us? What you know? What what was going on? And uh, he said, "Well, I, I didn't motion for y'all. What are you talking about?" Well, when you come down the hill there, when you come down through the holler and stepped over the fence right there, he said we saw you and you was motioning for us to come on to come to you. We thought we you was wanting us to go hunting with you, but we wasn't sure. And then when we got closer, it didn't really look like you. And now. It's like you had on different clothes. And they never did really say anything or explain anything to the kids. But from that day on, those kids were never allowed in that part of the yard, in the backyard. And uh, he went on to tell me and a few other kids that were older or later on in life, I guess, exactly what that was. And he said that was a fetch and that's we said why a fetch why do they call it a fetch he said that is something that is sent to fetch you into the abyss and never to be seen again now i never will forget those words that run cold chills on me and he said people claim they're in these woods and he said in this part of the town or county, he said they've been at least three seen over the last 50 years in this part of the woods. Well, I never will forget that. My Uncle Cedric, Stella Faye, they've long passed on. But I won't forget the words that he told me. And I won't forget her ever watching those kids. Um, he died on it was a rod run weekend in uh, 85 and he was born see in 21 so my uncle Cedric Gibson yep that was him but that's a uh, that's the story of the fetch the Smoky Mountain fetch well, I got time, I'll, I'll try to squeeze this other one in. When I try to do two, I'll leave a whole lot of story out. And I really hate to do that because there's, there's a lot to some of these stories that I do leave out or forget. But uh, this comes from uh, actually my great-grandfather, which I never knew him. But it was passed down through my uh, mother and her family and it was told none of them actually had anything to do this was all before their time but used to he lived at the foot of the mountains and it was about four miles or five to town but there was a trail you could take and the trail cut through these two mountains a holler and that trail was only about two miles if you took the trail. But uh, here's the thing. Nobody liked taking the trail. The trail was supposed to be haunted. 
you was to never take the trail of the night time and you was to never ever get off the trail ever and they used to say that when you was on the trail that you would hear stuff in the woods calling your name you'd hear women screaming and babies crying uh, my granny told me it was probably the watchers of the woods you would see people standing off the trail kind of looking like they were in distress uh, a lot of people claim to see uh, uh, I guess what you'd call lumberjacks, timbermen that worked in, in the wood, even though there wasn't no sawmill around. Some people claim to see coal miners, uh, soldiers, I mean, just, just everything. And uh, a few people in the community took the trail, and uh, they would come back and actually go mad. And he said that they knew some of the people that had went mad, they locked them away. Uh, one little boy went missing on the trail. And the trail had a name. I, I seen the trailhead when I was younger. And I could take you all there. The only thing is I would be trespassing now. Because my family no longer owns that property. But the trail, like I said, went through two mountains. And it was called the Divide. Now that's what they called the trail. When they would say, you going to take the Divide or you going to go the long way take the road take the wagon trail and if you said you was going to take the divide well you better not get off you better not stay out get off that trail and you better not stay out after midnight or after dark and like i say some people went out there and was brave he said there was a bunch of boys it's called the floyd boys believe it or not and they got brave and decided they was going to go out at sundown and they was going to go off the trail well, the story had it that only two of them come back. They don't know what happened to the other one. They don't know if he was attacked by a mountain lion or fell off a cliff or I don't, you know, ground in the river. Because it does start around the river, then it cuts away. But that's just a few of the people that was known to take the trail. The other Floyd boy, they said, never was the same. He never was right. And I think they wound up locking him away too. But the trail was still there. And they actually named a road after that trail. Right there near the trailhead. And you can look on Google Earth. It's called River Divide Road. And it's right here in Sevier County. And that trail, you can see the gap through the through the mountains and the trail run right along that gap right along that road there started at the river where the river turns away but that's what was called the divide and that was way back around i guess probably the turn of the century but a lot of crazy stuff happened around that trail i can remember one hunting my uncle and he'd hear his dogs running and he'd claim oh no they're over in the divide. I'll be lucky if they all come home. And sure enough, you know, sometimes they'd come home, sometimes they wouldn't. I mean, he could tell if they was running in the divide, if they was running in the Joby Green holler. I mean, he could, you know, back then you knew, you knew the area where your dogs was barking. You paid a lot of money for them. But that's two little short stories. And I never did walk the, the divide trail. I saw the trailhead. I was young, too young to go on it by myself. I seen it a few times. It was creepy looking. If I can sneak over there one day, I'll, I'll take a picture of it and show you all. I don't know if the trail itself is still there. I know the trailhead was still there. But anyway, I've got some more stories. And by the way, I had people commenting on the dog being in the graveyard, being disrespectful to people's graves. It's a long, long walk from where I live to this graveyard. And trust me, this dog does its business way before we ever get to this graveyard. Or I would not bring her up here. I am not disrespectful of people at all. So anyway, guys, until next time, this is South Force 10. And uh, I'll be hollering at y'all. See you.